What if you had to leave your home today? What if you had to say goodbye to your family, your friends, and everything that's familiar to you? How do you start from scratch? Navigate a new culture or learn a new language? These were the questions I struggled with as I packed my entire life in two suitcases and boarded a plane with my toddler to leave my birth country. It was with an aching heart as I watched through the airplane portal on my first ever flight, how South Africa became a little speck underneath the clouds. Fear of the unknown and hope for a better future warred within me. But this isn't just my story. This is the stark reality for millions. According to the United Nations, approximately 281 million people worldwide migrated internationally by 2020, whether for work, school, or seeking a better life. To put that into perspective, imagine almost the entire population of the United States uprooting themselves and leaving within a single year. That is the astonishing scale we're talking about. Growing up in South Africa, I was used to continuously looking over my shoulder. I slept with a gun underneath my pillow. That was my reality. But the final straw came on a day that started out like any other. I was at work when I got that fateful phone call from my daughter's daycare. Whatever you hear on the radio, your daughter is fine. Come and get her immediately. The world stopped spinning as I listened in horror. Our armed attackers had stormed the daycare in broad daylight and held the little kids and their caregivers hostage. I've never been so terrified in my life. But I was determined. I was determined to get to my little girl and hold her in my arms and ensure she was safe. And I was determined to leave the country as quickly as possible. The day I left, with only a glimmer of hope, and my young child for companions, was a whirlwind of emotions. As we flew across continents and oceans, I held on to that promise of a safer future, that we would be accepted for who we were, regardless of where we came from. And then, stepping foot into Texas on Christmas Eve, <laughs> it was like entering a new world. The air smelled different. The culture was a mystery. I couldn't discern the accent. I learned we were driving on the other side of the road, and in America, the bonnet on a vehicle is called the hood, and the boot, not the kind you wear, is called a trunk. We even had to learn how to prepare for tornadoes. Everywhere we went, experienced new customs. It was terrifying. What a journey of discovery. We learned, like many others before us, and I brought with me my skills and experience to contribute to my new country. It wasn't easy. When I started work, I couldn't focus on my work assignments because I couldn't understand my supervisors. However, due to the kindness and understanding, I eventually fit in quite well. The best way to adapt in a new country is through adaptation. I did that by engaging with my neighbors and with my community. I read stories at the local library. I volunteered at the schools and participated in community events, I embraced life within my new community. 
it's inspiring to know that about 25% of all public companies in the US backed by venture capital investors were started by immigrants, just like me. To give you an idea of these companies, Google, Yahoo, eBay, and Intel. It's a testament to the fact that immigrants don't just seek opportunities. We do create them. And then, a few years later, we did it again. This time we moved all the way north. And our biggest lesson was how to survive the frigid Canadian winters. I've never been so cold in my life. I thought for sure we're going to turn into icicles. And then our Canadian babysitter walked in the house and complained because it was freezing. She then showed us the, unbeknownst to us, of course, miraculous concept of central heating. We not only survived, we thrived. And eventually we became Canadian citizens. Two years later, my kids represented Canada at the BMX World Championships. We have found our place in the world. What could you do, you might ask, to welcome someone new in your community? I urge you, share stories over a cup of coffee instead of pointing to the nearest coffee shop. Walk with them to the library. Welcome their children into your schools. Show them the same kindness and understanding my supervisors did when I first started in Texas. Remember, we're not just immigrants, we're people. We're people who take a huge leap of faith to start over in a different country. We people who bring with us diverse experiences and skills to contribute to our new homes. And we're people who strive to create better lives for ourselves and our families. I want you for a moment to understand the absolute enormity of the journeys immigrants undertake and the courage it takes to start over. And I want you to think about that these stories aren't just statistics, but they are the true individual journeys, fraught with challenges and victories. I stand before you today, not just as an immigrant and not just as a speaker, but as the true testament of the power of resilience, adaptation, and community. My story isn't unique, but it echoes the experiences of millions across the globe. It's a story of courage, of success, and of hope. Success for an immigrant isn't just about fitting in to their new home, into the new community. It's about feeling at home within a world that is constantly moving and evolving. And for that, we need each other. Because at the end of the day, we are not defined by our origins, but by our shared humanity.